All right. Uh, on death row this week, we're exploring the story of Panir Selvam. Uh, he was an unwilling drug mule who was inducted in Singapore and is currently sentenced to death uh, in Singapore. And we're speaking today to Anne Surendran, who's Panir's lawyer. Thank you so much, Mr. Surendran, for speaking to us on the light breakfast this morning. Sure thing. Now, tell us about uh, when you found out about Panir's case and when you agreed to take it up. Um, well, I had, been, I had been taking up a number of uh, cases involving Malaysians who had been um, uh, arrested for, for alleged drug trafficking in Singapore. And because of that, uh, Panir's um, uh, relative, his, his sister came and saw me um, uh, saying that, that they're facing this difficulty and he had um, been convicted and had lost all his appeals and is uh, due to be executed. Um, strangely enough, or by providence and fate, just a week after she came and saw me, the letter was uh, the um, letter was issued, say, from the Singapore Prison Authority, saying that he will be executed. So it was very timely that she came and saw me just a week or ten days before the event. That allowed me to move swiftly, rush to Singapore with an application, and 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 block the execution. And since then, of course, uh, since the Singapore Court of Appeal allowed the stay of uh, execution, um, it gave us the time to file the necessary challenges against his death sentence. And those challenges are still pending in the Singapore Court of Appeal. Now, but, but what would be the best outcome in this situation, in your opinion, in your professional opinion? Well, of course, we are hoping that uh, we, can, we can get him out of death row and um, uh, long-term imprisonment is, of course, much preferable to, to, to execution, both for him and, of course, the families. No one wants to die in that terrible way at the end of a rope. And that's the outcome that we're looking for. Mm. Um, you, you, know, he, that, that, you know, for, for what they're alleged to have done, um, uh, the, the punishment uh, is not commensurate. And the amounts that they're accused of having smuggled in are very, very small amounts. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, um, uh, and most of them, are, uh, even if it's true what is alleged against them, they are, they are merely drug mules. They are not the traffickers. Executing them achieves nothing because the traffickers will just find other drug mules to send in. Mm -mm. Uh, Panir's family has hit so many roadblocks, uh, you know, lawyers. You weren't allowed to see him for a while as well, I believe. Uh, like so many roadblocks. Uh, do, you, do you feel like positive going into this that it will come out the way that the family wish that it will come out? Yes, in fact, I've never been allowed to see Panir. Um, there was a time that they, that they said I could see, but at, at the 11th hour, they blocked me. So I've only been able to communicate with Pani through the family members. And of course, since I'm his Malaysian solicitor, it, that, that has made it easier for, for, for the Singapore authorities to try and block me from seeing him. Although it is, of course, highly improper. Because, for example, in Malaysia, there have been many um, uh, drug trafficking cases involving foreigners. And the Malaysian authorities have always allowed access to the um, uh, solicitors from their country who are, who, are deal, who are instructing or dealing with the Malaysian lawyers who are taking up that case, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the particular case, you see. But in, in Singapore, I think wrongfully, they, they prevent uh, a Malaysian lawyer like myself from, from, from exerting or from, from providing as much help as I can to my mm -hmm. client. Um, so, so that's why I've, I've never been able to, you know, see him. But as you say, yeah, it, 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 in fact, when we got the stay of execution back in April uh, 2019, no, it was end of, it was May 2019, uh, we actually did not expect it. And um, it was on the eve of the execution. He was supposed wow. to be executed the next morning. We were in court that afternoon with the last ditch stay of execution application and it could have gone either way. Thank you. Thank goodness, um, um, the, the court saw the points that we had raised and they allowed the um, stay of execution. But yes, there's a roadblock. And we're hoping that we can get more public support here in Malaysia, that we can get more support from the government also uh, in, in, in looking into these matters. Because there has been a series of 
um, uh, uh, unfair uh, acts and unfair uh, treatment of um, of uh, our drug uh, accused in Singapore, mm. including of course Panir and others. Yeah. How different is our our law here when it comes to drug mule? Yeah. In fact, uh, we say it's the same problem here. Uh, uh, we have to concede that 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 the that the drug laws in Malaysia are equally um, uh, 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 a matter of concern. Now, the only difference is that the rate of convict or the or the or the statistics in conviction in Malaysia are much low, lower than in Singapore. In other words, the the, the benefit of the doubt seems to be. Um, well, more seriously taken, I would say, in, in Malaysia. And also in Malaysia, there have been no executions for quite some time. Mm. The, the governments uh, have placed a moratorium. They are re-looking re at, the, at, the uh, at the drug trafficking laws, the Dangerous Drugs Act. Even under the previous government, even they were uncomfortable with it and even they uh, brought some amendments, some minimal amendments to it. The subsequent government also committed to carrying out some amendments executions were not being carried out. So that there is some recognition here that there's a problem with these harsh drug laws. So would if Pane were to be brought back here in Malaysia, would he have suffered the same fate? He may not have. That when it comes to these kind of drug trafficking cases, our courts are much more independent mm. and they take the benefit of the doubt very seriously. Um, there, the, 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 the policy is very, very harsh, very strict. There are statements made by ministers, senior ministers, basically sending a message to their judiciary that, look, we are very serious about this drug trafficking problem. We want to see convictions, you know, messages that come out in that manner, public comments that, that gives us, uh, you know, that's what creates our concern. Mm. That, no, that you I... don't see that happening in our country. You don't see that happening in Malaysia. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now, I read actually in an article that uh, uh, Panir's sister, Sankari, actually went all around Johor and track down this person who gave him these drugs to bring into Singapore. And I think the Singapore courts have also um, caught someone in con connection with this case, right? And then earlier you were saying something about the certificate that will, mm -hmm. that will free mm -hmm. him from the gallows. Should mm -hmm. he be granted this certificate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. In fact, that's the thing. Um, apart from whatever information that Pani himself gave during his cooperation with the Singapore authorities. Uh, the, the, the family extraordinarily, it was very extraordinary, the family acted like their own private investigators and they were going around and gathering information. They obtained information. That information was actually conveyed to the Singapore authorities. She had met with the uh, Singapore authorities and conveyed. And despite that, uh, they were not giving that certificate. Our, our problem with that certificate is that it gives the power of life and death to the Attorney General and the Attorney General's um, uh, uh, officers in Singapore. Now, that's wrong. The power of life and death should be in the hands of a judge. That doesn't happen in Malaysia. In Malaysia, it's the judge who decides one way or the other. But here, it's, you know, just by dint of denying Pani that certificate, they can send him to the gallows. And we're saying that is, that is so wrong, and that, that, you know, that, that, that you can do that, that the, that the state can do that. Because the Attorney General is a political appointee in, in Singapore. Yeah. You know, so that that's that's among that, that's why we're saying that the process in Singapore is very unfair. These are Malaysian citizens. The lot the majority of of those on in death penalty for drug matters in Singapore in Changi prison are Malaysians. Young Malaysians who either if if they're not innocent, then they've been trapped by some drug kingpins mm. and for small amounts of money and small amounts of drugs, and then they face the ultimate penalty. So the option or the ability to use a certificate is no longer viable? It's no longer an option? No, it is in the law that the, the authorities can give a certificate to say that the accused person has cooperated with the authorities. And with that certificate, a Singapore High Court judge will be empowered to sentence him, let's say, to life imprisonment in, instead of death. Mm -hmm. But without that certificate, upon conviction, it means... That. And that's what happened to Panir. Despite his cooperation, despite the efforts of the family, you know, he wasn't given the certificate. So the power of life and that is being held by the Attorney General. And we're saying that is, that is uh, completely wrong in terms of uh, international norms and human rights norms. That doesn't happen in Malaysia. We don't have any such system and rightly so. Mm. What 
are you and the family doing moving forward? What's the plan right now to get Panair this certificate or what is the plan right now? Okay, the, 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 the denial of the certificate is being challenged and, and, and that is what is pending in the Court of Appeal in Singapore. Among other, among other things, that is also being challenged. Uh, at the same time, we are, uh, we are uh, I think that, that there's also a public campaign still ongoing on Facebook. Um, it, it, it's been going on since, I think, last year. And it, it, it also has to be seen in the context of the other Malaysians cases um, uh, Dashna Murthy um, and, and, and the other uh, Malaysian cases where they are also mounting challenges which may affect Panir's case. So taking all this into consideration with the other cases, how it would affect Panir's case, the best case scenario is life imprisonment. And also, yes. what's, what's the timeline that we have? How much time does Panir mm. have? Um, it really depends on the court because it's pending in the Court of Appeal. No date for hearing has been fixed. Suppose the Court of Appeal hears it and dismisses all these applications, then it, he, he will be, um, how shall we put it, in online in, in death row to be the next person to be executed. So it's, it's difficult to, it all depends on, 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 on when the court hears the matter and, and if it's dismissed or allowed. You know, but but we feel that 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 that, 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 that we have to, uh, you know, there must be public awareness both here in Singapore and some some uh, influence and pressure must be brought to bear upon Singapore to come to the realization that executing this drug news is not solving the drug trafficking problem in Singapore. It is not. So how can we as Malaysians help save Panir and all the other Malaysians who are on death row in Singapore? Well, I think by, by speaking out, nowadays it's, even, it's easy even for ordinary people to, to, to say something because of the availability of, um, of social media, to read up and understand the issue, to support uh, Panir's um, uh, um, uh, Facebook uh, campaigns, um, uh, I suppose these ways. But, it is, I, but I have to concede that it is not an easy topic or an easy subject in which to get people to join in because... I have to concede that many people do think that the death penalty is necessary, whereas others have an opposed, opposed view. It is a very contentious issue. Mm. Many are against it on principle. They think no one has the right to take a human life except God, and many people are naturally anti-death penalty. Others feel that law and order uh, and those who have transgressed the laws of society must pay the ultimate price. It is a very contentious issue, and not everyone supports our campaign. Is there no other... Way to do. Is there a, a Singapore version of Surindran in Singapore who could take up help take up this fight for you over there? Is there no? Have you spoken to a counterpart there? Well, yes. Uh, there's uh, there's the uh, pretty renowned uh, Singapore human rights lawyer M Ravi, and he is actually um, uh, I've instructed. You know, he's actually working with me taking up the other cases for Dashna Murthy and Gobi Avidian, the other Malaysians who have challenged. Uh, they are. But there are execution notices on other grounds. Uh, he's also been helping to advise in the Panir's case. There, there, have been, there have been lawyers who have been helpful, but very few Singapore lawyers are prepared to come forward uh, because of uh, the, the very strict, um, uh, well, because of the atmosphere in Singapore. For example, in Singapore, if a lawyer brings a case and the, 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 the courts or the authorities can say that if that case is not reasonably brought, then they can take action against the lawyer himself. Mm. So they put, this puts the fear into many Singapore lawyers who don't want to come forward and risk it. Um, I, th that no such thing happens in our country. Lawyers are free to take up, to, to take up, uh, lawyers are free to, law, lawyers are free to take up cases without any kind of uh, a retaliated, retaliatory measure by the authorities. That's not the case in Singapore. Wow. But there are one or two. And also, I think I must uh, say that in Panir's case, at the 11th hour, the lawyers that came forward to act for them in that stay application on, on, on the very afternoon morning of the, of the day on which the stay of execution application for Panir was scheduled, were two very courageous young Malaysian lawyers who happened to be practicing in Singapore. Malaysians can practice in Singapore. Uh, and those two young Malaysian lawyers are the ones who actually finally saved uh, uh, Panir. 
by by arguing that stay application on that afternoon because I, I I'm not licensed to practice law in Singapore. Mm. Right. Mm. All right. Now, um, Surendra, I guess if you could turn back time and if you can go back and advise the younger Panair before all this happened, what would you say to him? Well, um, of course, Panir has 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 maintained a, a, a consistent stand that 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 he was wrongly convicted. Hmm. But generally speaking, I would advise you know, um, uh, you know all all you know young Malaysians, um, particularly those who, who who are trying to find a way to make a bit of money, to just strictly stay away from anything that smacks of of drugs. Or, or anything illegal when entering a foreign country, you know, but it is just not worth, you know, what happens to you if you get caught. You know, it's, it's better to find a, 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 you know, a proper way to earn a living than to, and that, than to fall into the, the trap of, of, you know, drug peddling or, or becoming a mule uh, for the ambitions of vicious drug pins who make millions out of this trade. Mm. 